What we will be looking at in this video will be entirely two-dimensional representations of greater dimensional shapes. In three dimensions, these shapes will be familiar and their depictions intuitive. However, in four and five dimensions, these shapes and forms obey rules for geometry greater than even those bounding our own local cosmos. So we can only depict them as two-dimensional representations of three-dimensional shadows cast as wire frames of these hypershapes edges. The five regular polytopes in three dimensions, called grossly the platonic solids, are the easiest to model in two dimensions. Wireframe models may be used to depict their stationary points along their three spin axes of symmetry, seen from above a cell face, from above an edge line, and from above a vertex corner, respectively. Likewise, between these wireframe stations, motion may be animated using CGI to imitate the length, width, and depth of the 3D solid objects. The simplest regular polytope in three dimensions is the tetrahedron, whose spin axes of symmetry connect from above a cell face to an opposite vertex corner, from above one edge line's midpoint to the midpoint of the opposite edge line, and from above a vertex corner to the centroid of the opposite cell face. The only regular polytope formed of squares. The cube's spin axes of symmetry connect from the centroid of one cell face to the centroid of the opposite cell face, from above the midpoint of an edge line to the midpoint of the opposite edge line, and from above a vertex corner to the opposite vertex corner. The octahedron like the tetrahedron and isosahedron, is made up of triangular cell faces, and its spin axes of symmetry connect from above the centroid of one of the polytope's faces to the centroid of the opposite cell face, from above the midpoint of one edge line to the midpoint of the opposite edge line, and from above one vertex corner to the opposite vertex corner. Comprised of 20 triangles, this polytope's three spin axes of symmetry connect from above the centroid of one of its cell faces to the centroid of its opposite cell face, from above the midpoint of an edge line to the midpoint of the opposite edge line, and from above one vertex corner to its opposite vertex corner. Made of 12 pentagons and the only three-dimensional regular polygon to be made of that shape, the dodecahedron has spin axes of symmetry connecting from above the centroid of one cell face to the centroid of the opposite cell face, from above the midpoint of one edge line to the midpoint of the opposite edge line, and from above one vertex corner to the opposite vertex corner. These regular polytopes all share the same three basic types of spin symmetry axes, expressed as the three traits of length across the cell face, width of the edge line, and depth of the vertex corners, because they exist in three-dimensional space, which is defined by six possible directions or three pairs of opposites, each pair being a dimension. Because they share all these traits, the five regular solids can be embedded or nested into one another in a variety of different arrangements. Because it has a unique spin axis of symmetry, connecting from above the centroid of one cell face to an opposite vertex corner, and from above one vertex corner, vice versa, to the centroid of the opposite cell face, 
the tetrahedron does not have a corresponding dual counterpart with any other of the five regular polytopes in three dimensions. However, the remaining four polytopes in three dimensions are dually paired to one another. The centroid points of the eight cell faces of an octahedron can be connected as the eight vertex corners of a cube, and the centroid points of the six cell faces of a cube can be connected as the six vertex corners of an octahedron. Likewise, the isosahedron's 20 cell faces centroid points can all be connected together to comprise the 20 vertex corners of a dodecahedron, and, just so, the 12 cell faces centroid points of a dodecahedron can all be connected to produce the form of the isosahedron from its 12 vertex corners. When one of these five regular polytopes in three dimensions is nested or embedded inside of another, they remain in relationship to one another as three-dimensional forms. But when one of these five regular polytopes in three dimensions is nested or embedded inside of another identical to itself, it takes on the characteristics of a hypershape or four-dimensional polytope. Picture a tetrahedron made of four tetrahedrons around a central fifth vertex corner. Picture a cube made of six cubes around a central seventh, and this innermost seventh cube has the same volume as the outermost cube containing all the rest. This is the realm of four-dimensional space where a three-dimensional regular polytope multiplied by itself over time becomes a hypershape or four-dimensional regular polytope. Likewise, the three-dimensional octahedron has its counterpart in the four-dimensional 16 cell, the three-dimensional dodecahedron in the four-dimensional 120 cell, and the three-dimensional isosahedron in the four-dimensional 600 cell. Counterpart of the tetrahedron in three dimensions, the four simplex, or hypertetrahedron, is, as its title implies, the simplest form of regular polyhedra possible in any given dimension. In two dimensions, this is the triangle of three vertex corners and three edge lines. In three dimensions, the tetrahedron of four triangles. In four dimensions, the four simplex of four tetrahedrons combined into one. When imaging the properties of four-dimensional polytopes using CGI, however, we are immediately confronted with the significant difference between such hyper shapes and regular polytopes in three dimensions such as the platonic solids. The vertex corners, edge lines, and cell faces of a four-dimensional hyper shape can all pass through one another, thus violating the law applicable in three dimensions that surfaces remain impenetrable. We can clearly see in CGI rendered models how the vertex corners, edge lines, and even cell faces of four-dimensional hypershape regular polytopes can pass through one another. This trait is common to all dimensions greater than the third. The counterpart of the cube in three dimensions, the hypercube, or tesseract, is best understood as being a single cube moving between two different places in space over a duration of time. Thus, one cube becomes two equal cubes with the same inner volume and outer surface area. This extension of a single three-dimensional polytope into a pair of equal polytopes along a dimension that measures duration 
is the essence of hyperspace geometry as it relates to the possible physics of zero-point energy. If four-dimensional space may be used to model the fourth-dimensional motion of entropy, then the motions of these four-dimensional regular polytopes, as rendered according to CGI wireframe modeling, become significantly more relevant to understanding the nature of such hypershapes and their hyperspace geometry as they affect zero-point energy above the speed of light and thus beyond the fastest velocity of entropy. The counterpart of the octahedron in three dimensions, the 16-cell regular polytope in four dimensions, sometimes called a four-orthoplex, is dual embedding to the tesseract or four-dimensional cube in the same way as the octahedron is to the cube in three dimensions, and so vice versa as well. The tesseract embeds dually inside of and around the 16 cell in the same way the cube does around and within the octahedron. The 16 cell faces of the 16 cell correspond to the 16 vertex corners of the tesseract and so the 24 cell faces of the tesseract or hypercube correspond to the 24 vertex corners of the 16 cell regular polytope in four dimensions. Again, consider the motions taken by this hyper octahedron as it violates the law of impermeable plane spaces in CGI rendering. The fourth dimension of time does not obey the same laws as the third dimension of space. The 24 cell is self-dual, meaning its 24 cell faces map exactly onto its own 24 vertex corners and it embeds itself within itself. Thus, the 24 cell is truly a four-dimensional hypershape in the sense of being an object nested within itself, the only difference between the interior and exterior of which is measured as a duration in the fourth dimension e.g. over time. In three dimensions, each regular polytope had a flat surface for its cell faces. The tetrahedron was triangles, the cube squares, the dodecahedron pentagons, etc. But in four dimensions, each regular polytope has a three-dimensional polytope as each of its cell faces. The four simplex, or hypertetrahedron, having four tetrahedrons as cell faces. The hypercube, or tesseract, having six cubes around a central seventh inside of an eighth as its cell faces. And so the 24 cell with 24 octahedron cell faces, etc. Although the 24 cell is made out of octahedron cell faces, it is not reducible to a three-dimensional octahedron. Because it is self-dual, it is not accurately comparable to any of the five regular polytopes in three dimensions. The 24 cell is a hypershape unique to four dimensions. The counterpart of the dodecahedron in three dimensions, the 120 cell is dual with the 600 cell in four dimensions. Because the 600 cell is comparable to the isosahedron in three dimensions, and so, like the dodecahedron and isosahedron in three dimensions, the 120 cell and 600 cell are dual embedding to one another. The 120 cell faces of the 120 cell correspond to the 120 vertex corners of the 600 cell and the 600 cell faces of the 600 cell correspond to the 600 vertex corners of the 120 cell. The manner in which these hyper shapes fit together is the same as the manner in which the five regular polytopes in three dimensions can be nested into one another 
or else into themselves recursively. This manner is innate to their geometries, whether they are in three-dimensional space or in four-dimensional space-time. And, as we shall see in the next section, this progression does not end with the fourth spatial dimension. It continues on to a plateau from the fifth dimension onward, with only three regular polytopes for any dimension greater than four. The counterpart of the three-dimensional isosahedron, the four-dimensional 600 cell, is dual with the four-dimensional 120 cell, which corresponds to the three-dimensional dodecahedron in the same way the isosahedron is dual to the dodecahedron in three dimensions. This means the 600 cell faces of the 600 cell correspond to the 600 vertex corners of the 120 cell, and the 120 cell faces of the 120 cell correspond to the 120 vertex corners of the 600 cell. The 600 cell is comprised of 600 isosahedral cell faces, and as these all move relative to and through one another in CGI rendered models, we can conclude that in four-dimensional space-time, unlike in three-dimensional space, surface areas are not inviolable. If spatial three-dimensional surface areas can be violated in this manner in the hyperspace of four-dimensional space-time, then we can understand all these hypershapes as being temporal forms that can pass invisibly through solid objects. If we think of the five regular polytopes as being, in three dimensions, merely a shadow cast by hypershapes that themselves exist in four-dimensional hyperspace or space-time, then the source of the illumination by which these four-dimensional hypershapes cast these three-dimensional polytope shadows is itself at least fifth-dimensional in its nature. So we study the fourth dimension to understand time, and so we study the fifth dimension to understand tachyons. The five simplex, or fifth dimensional tetrahedron, is simply enough comprised of five tetrahedra cell faces. Just as a tetrahedron in three dimensions, has four triangular faces and a hypertetrahedron, or four simplex, in four dimensions, has four tetrahedra cell faces around an extra inner vertex corner. So too does the five simplex merely expand this central core vertex corner into a fifth tetrahedron cell face. Nevertheless, the five simplex remains elusive to the minds of many due to its boundary-breaking motions. It should also be noted that, by this point, the hypershape we are modeling with CGI can exhibit motion in no fewer than ten different possible directions, and all at the same time. Thus, being able to pass through itself intangibly, and to exhibit motion in ten or more different directions, the simplex hypershape above the fourth dimension, that is, from the fifth dimension up, differs from how we tend to think about solid matter with mass in three-dimensional space. The five-dimensional hypercube, or five tesseract is modeled in CGI rendering according to only a slight complication of the four-dimensional hypercube or four tesseract. Just as the cube in three dimensions has six cell faces, each a square of four vertex corners and four edge lines, and the hypercube in four dimensions has six cubes around a seventh, 
all inside an eighth, so too does the five tesseract have 32 vertices, 80 edges, 80 square faces, 40 cubic cells, and 10 tesseract four faces. As the hypershapes become further and further removed from the familiar physics we experience in our three-dimensional space and four-dimensional space-time reality, their exotic properties also multiply. As such, what we can model using CGI rendering of shapes in the fifth dimension is superficial, at best, to the depths of their possible motions. A two-orthoplex is a square. A three-orthoplex is a regular octahedron. And a four-orthoplex is a sixteen-cell. The five-orthoplex, or five-dimensional cross-polytope, is thus also rightly a fifth-dimensional hyper-octahedron. The cross-polytope is the dual polytope of the tesseract, or hypercube, and so the number of cell faces of one will always correspond to the number of vertex corners in the other, regardless of which dimension it is in. Thus, in all dimensions from the fifth up, the tesseract pattern and the orthoplex pattern are intertwined, while the simplex model stands apart and alone. So, from the fifth dimension onward, so far as we know now, there are no fewer than these three hypershapes in each dimensional stratum. It should be noted, there may be more or less regular polytopes on any dimensional level and the realms of multidimensional geometry are still being explored. So, let us next pause to consider that Hekbalah, the ancient Hebrew mystic tradition, is based largely on study of the four-dimensional hypercube, or four tesseract, in the form of the Gra diagram of the Tree of Life, the latter-day name for the Tree of Knowledge in Eden. In this context, the hypershape is used as a lattice onto which to place traits for memorization of their relationships to one another. Focusing the mind on a four-dimensional hypershape is considered to be a profound mystical experience by some, and if performed correctly, it can inspire ideas, thoughts, and emotions one otherwise would have never had. But what does it mean for Hakabalah to be based largely on the study of the four tesseract? The tesseract itself is only one facet in the manifold of all possible hypershapes. So what is it about the four tesseract that has attracted to it such importance? We shall study this in the next section of my lecture series on Kabbalah.